and welcome to this edition of the NAVE News Update on this Monday, October 15th. There are only 22 days left until the election on November 6th. I am your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of the news stories for the day. The Klamath tribes are getting a share of the record run of Chinook salmon coming into Northern California's Klamath River. Tribal members held a ceremony of thanks last week at the Iron Gate Fish Hatchery just south of the Oregon-California border and picked up dozens of fresh salmon that could be packed in coolers and taken home to their families. Tribal Vice Chairman Don Gentry said the tribe has been getting frozen fish for years, but the fresh fish represented a step closer to being able to harvest salmon themselves from traditional fishing spots, something they have not been able to do for over a century. Today was just a prayer of thanks for the fish, he said afterwards. Predictions call for a record return of 380,000 salmon to the Klamath River and its tributaries this year. So far, 3,789 have made it to the hatchery after evading tribal and sports fishermen compared to 416 at this time last year. The Gap Clothing Company has taken heat from across Indian country and social media networks for the introduction of a new t-shirt, Manifest Destiny, and Indigenous people are responding through petitions and action to bring the issue to the public's attention at change.org, where as of October 15th, over 2,000 people had already signed a petition calling on Gap to discontinue the shirt. Gap shirt designer Mark McNary's initial response to the issue raised was to post a tweet on his Twitter page that simply said, Manifest Destiny, Survival of the Fittest. The U.S. Forest Service is awarding nearly $3 million for projects using trees and forests to improve water quality in the Great Lakes region. Forest Service officials said recently that trees have a natural ability to provide wildlife habitat, prevent erosion, absorb toxins, and limit runoff. Programs in Detroit received grants to plant 2,000 trees in Detroit and the Rogue River watersheds in Grand Rapids. 500 trees will be planted in parks along the Grand River to reduce the effect of the emerald ash borer invasion. The Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians will restore 244 acres of trees lost to the ash borer along the Manistique and St. Mary Rivers. And the Delta Institute will plant hybrid popple farms at polluted industrial sites around the Lower Peninsula. The Red Lake Band of Chippewa are planning a new casino, hotel, and restaurant in War Road. The Seven Clans Casino, Hotel, and Restaurant Complex will include 600 slot machines, a 100-seat restaurant, a 50-seat snack bar off the gaming floor, and a 60-room hotel. The Babidji Pioneer reports that the pre-construction has begun on the 165-acre site and groundbreaking is set for October 25th. The Red Lake Band will continue to operate the nearby Lakeview restaurant and the Super 8 Motel on Highway 11 near their present casino. Fifteen Native Americans are suing state and county officials over the lack of election services on three Montana reservations, saying their inability to vote early or register late there is an unconstitutional denial of equal voting access. The plaintiffs last week asked a federal judge in Billings to issue an emergency order requiring the state and counties to open satellite election offices on the Crow, Northern Cheyenne, and Fort Belknap reservations. They say they must now drive between 27 and 113 miles round trip to each uh, to reach their county offices, and the only place that allows in-person absentee voting and late registration, both of which began October 9th. Our position is the state has the duty to provide the same opportunity for absentee voting as non-Indians, said plaintiff's attorney Terrell Matt. We have a system designed right now where non-Indians can walk in and vote absentee, so why can't Indians? With President Obama re-leading in some national polls and gaining or regaining in several battleground states like Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Iowa, all eyes are on the tipping point, and columnist Mark Trehunt points to another state that he says may now have been recently become competitive. Arizona, where the most recent poll by Rocky Mountain gave Obama a two-point lead and a statistical tie with Romney in the state. 
While not yet showing a convincingly chance at a Democratic win there, since Romney still has a five-point lead over the spread of polls during the last month, Trehant points out that the community organizing to turn out voters, both the Latino and Native American communities there, could make a difference in this and future elections if those communities, some showing only a 50 to 60 percent voter registration, both register and actually turn out to vote. You can find Trehant's columns at marktrehant.org and stay tuned. It's going to be a close race. In Trade Stock Exchange is predicting a 63 percent chance of Obama's re-election as of today. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and come back again soon.